Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about battery degradation and what I've seen on my car, so if you're interested, stay tuned. When we think about EVs in general and recharging and recharging those batteries, one of the main questions you always ask are, how long are those batteries going to last with all that recharging? Back in 2018, and still currently, the Model 3 and Model Y use the 2170 lithium-ion batteries, which are rated at 500,000 miles, which is a ton more mileage than I'm going to need ever in a car, but that's what they're rated at, so there's plenty of range there. This is, you know, kind of old tech now because the 4680 batteries have been announced, and hopefully in, you know, the next maybe year or two, they'll start be, you know, being put into production for the 3 and the Y, and that's going to change the whole EV game basically completely. As you may or may not know, degradation does happen slowly, and so I think I'm seeing a little bit in my car. The general consensus is that in the first year of ownership, as you as the batteries are brand new right off the production line and they get charged and recharged, you'll see a bigger drop in like a bigger degradation curve than after than years after that. One very, very, very rough way to figure out your degradation is to just go into the app and uh, the Tesla app now has a feature where if you go into charging, you can charge your battery all the way up to 100% and it'll tell you what the actual mileage is. So since my car is a mid-range, it's rated at 264 miles on a full charge. And right now if I do that, it says 247. So 247 divided by 265 is 6.5% degradation. And that's a very rough estimate. We're going to go over a more uh, precise estimate today and I'll show you what, what more likely my degradation is. Now the reason just going into your app and putting it to 100% and it says some number, you know, number of miles is because using the miles uh, number is just an algorithm that Tesla uses and Tesla has never actually released the actual algorithm and what vari like variables they're using to calculate that number. And again, it's just an estimated number. Percent is a way more precise way to figure out what your degradation is and, you know, if your battery is degrading or not. So over the past couple of years, I have kind of noticed some degradation, even just using the number method of miles where basically I charge 90%. And back at least a year ago, it'd be like at 235. And now, it go, and now it's down all the way to 223 and it hasn't really gone up and down. It's kind of just gone downhill. So I'm kind of a little bit suspicious that I might have a little bit of degradation. So that's why I decided to kind of do this little test here today. And the timing was perfect because we just did a long road trip from here in the Bay Area all the way down to San Diego to visit my in-laws and of course all the way back. And so the really long road trip uh, makes degradation uh, tests like this way more accurate than trying to do, you know, a small amount of mileage. So currently my car has just under 18,000 miles after the road trip and I did three separate tests. Uh, coming back up from San Diego because, you know, my car is mid-range. It doesn't have the most range, like a long range, so I had to charge a, a bunch of times to get back up here. And so I did a test basically three separate times during this road trip. So before we start, I want to give credit to Arthur. He's the author of the blog Voyage Without Carbon, and I got basically the information for the calculation to do the degradation test from his blog. And so if you want to check it out, it's in the link. Uh, link is in the description. He has a long range rear wheel drive and he's got over 150,000 miles on that car that he's been driving around the country and vlogging about it. And one more general consensus is that with the battery percentage, there's a 1% leeway because you don't know if it's 95.9% or 95.1%. It doesn't tell you in decimals. And so we're going to use that as part of the calculation as well. Keep in mind that you can do this test using 5% or 10% of your battery, but also know that if you use that small amount of energy, there's going to be more estimation involved to get your calculation. So basically, the more energy you use, the better. First leg of the trip, I did 93% down to 17%. So that's 76% total energy that I used during that leg. And during that leg, I used 41.676 kilowatt hours of energy. And so that's the 151 miles times the 276 watt hours per mile. So if we take 41.676 divided by 76%, that gets you 54.836 kilowatt hours of total energy at 100%. And so we know that the mid-range has a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if we take 54.836 and divide it by 61, that gets you 89.89%. .89%. Take one minus that, and that, that gets you a total of 10.1% degradation. 
So on the second leg of the trip, I did 78% minus 6%, which is 72% total. If we take the 43.9 miles times 276 watt hours per mile, that gets you 39.285. 39.285 kilowatt hours divided by 72% is 54.562 kilowatt hours total at 100%. 54.562 divided by 61 is 89.5%. Take 1 minus that, and that's 10.5% of degradation for leg 2. Last leg, we did 95% minus 3%, which is 92% total. And we drove 171.2 miles at 295 watt-hours per mile, which is 50.504 kilowatt-hours total. 50.504 divided by 92% is 54.9 kilowatt hours total at 100%. 54.9 divided by 61 is equal to 90, 90%, which equals 10% degradation. So as you can see, the degradation is pretty consistent, and it's at about 10% uh, over two years and 18,000 miles. In my opinion, this is actually a little bit high, as I've seen a lot of other cars with 5% degradation after even more years and way more miles, or even some that was even lower than that, around 2 or 3%. So is it possible that I got some of the crappier batteries out of the batch? Sure. I think for the age of the car and the mileage, 10% is kind of right on that borderline where it's like, should you be concerned or should you not be concerned? For me, eh, I don't really care because the range isn't an issue for me, so it's not really a big deal. The only time this would really cause us a hassle is if we go on road trips, like this last one. I don't really think it was a hassle at all, but if you do a lot of road trips, that's when it's going to become a hassle because you're going to have to charge more often than you would need. Fortunately, or maybe unfortunately for me, we don't really do very many road trips at all, so it's not really a big deal. So here are some things I think are possible causes of degradation. I do have home charging, but I basically never use it because I can get free energy at work, there are, there are free chargers that are walking distance from my house, and I have lots of free supercharging miles from all the referrals that I've gotten, so thank you if you've used my referral code. So there's really no need for me to use home charging unless I want to be super lazy, which a lot, of, a lot of the times I'm not. And so basically what that means is I don't keep my car charged 90% every night like you, sh like you can if you have home charging. Uh, because I get free energy, so I try, I use the free energy before I actually have to pay for energy. Elon once said, a happy Tesla is a plugged in Tesla. And so basically I can't accommodate that right now, basically because I don't want to, because I want to use my free energy. Age of the battery also plays a part. So the older the battery gets, it's slowly going to lose its charge where it can't actually charge all the way up. But at this point, my car isn't really old enough to have to worry about that as it's only two years old, like I mentioned. Supercharging. So if you're putting 150 kilowatt or 250 kilowatt power into the battery instead of your 6 kilowatt home charger, that's definitely going to have an impact on the battery and it's going to probably degrade the battery a little bit more. The Model 3 is known, and Model Y, is known to have a really good BMS, battery management system, but still putting that kind of high energy in the battery all the time can't be good for the battery, and so you're probably going to see a little bit more degradation if you're supercharging very, very frequently. On top of that, don't charge to 100% and let the car sit. This is not good for the battery and it will cause degradation. The only reason you'd want to charge to 100% is if you're on a road trip and you charge to 100% and then leave immediately to start using that energy. If you leave the battery at 100%, those electrons have nowhere to go and basically that's how the batteries de get degraded. Draining the battery below 10% all the time is another way to degrade the battery. Normally you want to keep the battery in the 20 to 90% range. So what can you do if battery decoration is bothering you on your car? First thing you should do is contact Tesla. What virtual support can do is they can actually look at your car's decoration compared to other cars in the fleet and they can compare it and see if your decoration is actually a lot higher than other cars in the fleet. Then they'll give you advice from there and probably one of the things they're going to tell you is to drain the battery all the way to 10% and then charge it all the way up to 90% as a reset or recalibration for the battery. This has actually been proven to not work, so I wouldn't do this even if they tell you to because it's not going to get you anywhere. So unless your battery is over 30% degraded and you're still under warranty with the 8 year, 100k or 120k depending on your variant warranty, there's not really a lot that Tesla can do about it. However, if it's bothering you that much, you can actually pay for it yourself. Elon has mentioned in the past that basically they can change out like specific batteries, just single batteries instead of changing the entire pack and it'd be way more cost effective if you want to do that. 
It's going to cost you about five to seven K to do that. Maybe that's worth it to you. Maybe it's not, but at least it's an option for you. My opinion, I think that it is really not worth it unless you are going on tons of road trips and you frequently need that range. Cause if not, just don't worry about it and enjoy your car. Do you have some decoration on your car? What percentage are you at using the formula in this video? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.